.http files provide an easy way to invoke your API endpoints without leaving your IDE. Both Rider and Visual Studio has built-in support for this. In this video, let's learn how to get started using .http files for your application. We will learn how to create and update .http files, send requests using them, see responses, and also manage different environments that you can execute your API endpoints against. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. Thanks to AWS for sponsoring this video and I'll be using an API that's built on AWS Lambda and also DynamoDB database. Without much delay, let's get straight into .http files. I have an ASP.NET Core application already built and set up ready for this application. This has the program.cs which has the different API endpoints. This API uses DynamoDB to store and retrieve data. So we have a basic CRUD application which creates, reads, updates and deletes weather forecast data. So we have multiple endpoints. One is for getting all the weather forecast for a city name. To get a specific weather forecast for a city name and a date, you can also post new weather forecast data and delete them in this API endpoint. Now all this is doing is writing to a DynamoDB context and saving, retrieving and deleting data from there. This DynamoDB context is injected into each of our methods and is registered in our builder.services right before this program application starts. Now the default ASP.NET Core template does create the .http files automatically. I went and manually deleted it to show you how to create it from scratch. To create a new .http file, you can right click this project and say add and create a new file. In here, let's select new item. Let's search for HTTP and you can choose the HTTP file and give a name for that. So let's keep the name as app.http and click add. Now this is going to create a new .http file inside our project. The format of all HTTP requests are the same. So you can provide the HTTP method that's used, the URL that it needs to invoke, and also an optional HTTP version. Now the supported HTTP methods include the one that's listed here, which includes the normal get, put, post, patch, delete options, etc. Now you can also specify the URL along with the request or you can use this as a variable. So let's see this in example. So let's come back and let's specify the first method which will be a get method. Now we need to specify a base URL for our API. So let's get this from a variable. To use a variable, we can specify it in the same file to get started. So let's specify at to indicate that it is a variable and let's specify base URL as the name. Now here you can give the value of this URL. Now to use this inside our get request method, we can specify the double braces and specify at base URL. And now once we have the base URL, you can specify the endpoint. Now in our case, if we switch back to our program.cs, you can see that this is slash weather forecast. So let's use that inside our endpoint name. We also need a city name, so let's specify Brisbane, which is what I will be using for testing. Now you can also make this as a variable, so let's specify at city name and use that inside here. So let's specify Brisbane. Now to use the variable inside here, we need to specify the double braces and specify at city name. Now this is going to use the city name variable and replace it with Brisbane. Now, once we have the base URL, if you want to add additional headers, you can do that by adding it in the immediate following line. There should not be any space after this URL and the headers that you need to specify. So let's specify accept as one header and let's give the value as application slash JSON. Now we have a simple endpoint defined in our .http file. Let's see how we can execute this. For this, we need the base URL's value to be specified. So if we navigate into this particular application, let's go to the properties, launch settings. You can see the URL for this application is here. So let's copy one of these, which is the HTTPS endpoint, and let's specify that inside our base URL. So let's use that to invoke this URL. Now to run this, you will need to run the application. So let's run this application. So let's run it on the HTTPS profile and this will start our application. Now our application is running. Now if you hover over this green line, you can see that it is saying it's not a valid absolute URI. So let's get rid of these 
additional double quotes that is not required in here. So let's remove that and let's specify the blank URL. Now that error is gone, which means we can send the request. So let's click send request, which is going to initiate a request on this URL. So you can see the request that's getting sent on our right side. So if you go to the request, you can see the actual request that is getting sent. In here, you can see the Brisbane also has an additional double quotes, which is why it is not returning any data. So if I collapse this explorer and let's adjust this and let's make sure to remove the extra double quotes around Brisbane as well and send the request again. Now, in this case, you can see that it has retrieved the data from our database and it's showing in here. Now, this data is coming from my DynamoDB database, which is set up inside my AWS account. So if I navigate to my AWS console, navigate to the weather forecast table and look at explore table items, you can see this data inside here. Now that we have one request, let's see how to add more requests inside our .http file. To delimit multiple requests, we need to use the triple hash symbol. So once we have a triple hash, it means the next request is starting. So let's specify get. We can use the variable base URL and let's specify the weather forecast for a specific date. So let's specify weather forecast slash city name. So in this case, it's going to be the city name. And let's also specify a date. Now, in this case, we have the date 20th of June, 2024, which already has a data. So let's specify that. So let's specify 20 June, 2024. Now, again, if we want to add headers, let's specify accept and let's specify application slash JSON. Now, once we have this defined, we can send this request, which will get the data for that specific city. So now we have easily added another one that is a get endpoint. Now to add another post one, let's use the triple hash to separate the new request. Let's specify post and let's again specify the base URL and just the weather forecast. Now this needs to send data to this endpoint. So let's specify the headers again like before, which is going to be application slash JSON. Let's also specify the content type inside this request, which again is going to be application slash JSON. Now, to specify the body, we need to leave one line after the header and specify the body text. So in this case, we can specify the JSON right in here. Now the data that this requires is in the same format that we are getting in the response. So let's copy this and let's paste this in here. So we have a new weather forecast data that we can send to our endpoint. So in this case, let's keep the city as Brisbane. Let's specify the date as 21st of June and let's specify the temperature as 5. Now, once we have this set up, we can send this to this endpoint. So let's say send request, which is going to invoke this application and return back with the response. Now you can see here, this has returned a zero bytes body and you can also see the request that's getting sent. So inside here, we have the full data that is getting sent. Now, if I come back and make a get all request, so let's send this request again, you can see there is three data that is returned back, including the 21st of June. So if I switch over to my AWS console and refresh the data here, you can see we have three items and the latest one just got added. Now to make a delete call, we can follow the very similar approach. So if we use the triple hash and separate the request, we can specify delete and let's specify the base URL Let's specify weather forecast and let's specify the item that needs to be deleted. So in this case, we can again specify the city name and the explicit date. So in this case, let's delete the 19th of June data. So let's specify 19 June 2024. And similarly, we can specify the accept header and specify application slash JSON. Now let's send this request, which is going to delete the item from this database. So if I make a get call again, it is going to only return two items. So we have successfully added all these endpoints in our .http file and sent these requests and tested this from our application. Now, since this is part of your source code, you can check this in and your other team members can also use this file to test the API endpoint as they are building it. Now, I also have this application deployed to AWS Lambda. Now, you can deploy your API anywhere that you prefer, but I have just chosen to deploy it in AWS Lambda. If you want to learn how to host ASP.NET Core APIs in AWS Lambda, check out my video that will be linked here and also in the descriptions below.
Now I have already deployed that. So if I switch over to my AWS console and navigate to the AWS Lambda, we can see this function deployed in here. So if I navigate to HTTP files test, this is the endpoint that I have deployed. Now I have enabled function URLs on here, so which is a property of Lambda, which allows you to expose a Lambda function on a URL. So now I have the API endpoint in this URL. So if I copy this, I can use this URL instead of our base URL to test our API endpoint. So let's switch back to Visual Studio. And if I paste in the URL for base URL as the URL that I just copied, we can use this to test it. So let's make a call to the get endpoint. And you can see this is responding back with the data, including the 21st of June that we just added because both of them are talking to the same database. So instead of copying and pasting the base URL inside here, which means you will have to keep changing the URLs inside this file, we can add an environment file for this .http file. To do that, let's open our solution explorer and add a new file. So let's click add and let's say new item. So in this case, this is simply going to be a JSON file and it should follow the name of http-client.env.json. So that's HTTP client environment.json file. So the name should be the, exactly the same so that let's click add and this creates a new JSON file for us. Now inside here, we can specify multiple environments. So let's specify dev as one of our environment and these could be any key value pairs. So let's specify dev and let's also specify test as another one. So we have two environments inside here, and this will have the same values for this properties. So in here, we need the base URI, so which is going to be there as base URI. And let's also copy and paste that inside our test environment. Now, if I come back, we have the base URL for our test copied here. So let's copy that and paste it inside this. For a dev environment, we can use the previous URL, which is the HTTPS localhost 7128. So let's copy that and paste this inside this dev environment. So once we save this, we have both these URLs inside here. And now let's see how to use this file from our app.http. So if you look at the right of this file, you can see a dropdown where it says environment.none. So let's close this and open this again. And you can see we have the two environments that we just added show up on this dropdown. So we have both dev and test environments in here. Now, since we already defined the base URL inside here, so let's make sure to make this as base URL instead of URI and reopen the app.http. Now, since we have already defined this inside the JSON file, we can remove it from this file directly and just have the city name inside this. Now, this is again showing the green squiggly lines. This is because we don't have an environment selected. So let's make sure to select the test environment and this squiggly lines disappear. Since now it is reading the base URL from this environment file. Now, if I simply click send request, it is going to send request to this and URL that is for that particular environment, and it is returning that data. So if I send request on the other one, that also returns the data. Now to switch environments, all you need to do is switch back to the dev environment. Now we need to make sure that the application is running for this to execute. So let's run the application again, and let's click the base URL request on our local application. So any changes that you make, you can test it against the environment.dev, and once you've deployed, you can test it against the test environment. Now let's assume that this URL also needs an API key or some kind of a token. So let's assume that's going to get passed as part of the header. So let's specify authorization and we need the token in here. So let's specify the token and this might be a secret key. Now, since this file is checked into your source control, you wouldn't want to hard code your secret key inside this file directly. In these cases, you can use different methods to move the secret key out of this file. So let's see one of the examples where we can use the user secrets in Visual Studio to store this secret key. If you're completely new to user secrets, I highly recommend checking out my video, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. By using user secrets, you can store sensitive information which will not be part of your source code. So let's see how we can do that. So let's go into our project. Let's right click and say manage user secrets. So inside here, there is an option manage user secrets. So let's click that. Now this adds a user secret file inside our local computer, but not as part of our source code. And it is getting linked to this project. I talk about all of this in my video that was linked before. 
So in here, let's specify the token. So let's pay API token. And in this case, let's specify my secret key. Now to use this from our API endpoint, we can switch over to our environment.json. So let's say for our base URL, let's specify the API token key. So let's specify the value as API token. Now to refer the value from user secrets, instead of hard coding the value here, let's open up this as a JSON object. Inside this, we can specify the provider and we can specify that provider value is ASP.NET user secrets. So this is a built-in provider that will look at the ASP.NET user secrets feature. So let's specify also the value that it needs to look at. So let's specify the secret name and let's specify the name that is used. So in here in secrets.json, we have used the same value. So let's specify API token. So this name should be capital N. So now all we're doing is specifying a variable inside our environment file and saying the provider is user secrets and get it from API token secret name. Now, once we have this, we can use this inside our .http file. So let's switch back to app.http and instead of hard coding it here, I can specify the API token as the variable. So let's specify the double braces and let's specify API token. Let's also make sure that we have the API token defined inside the test variables. So let's put a comma here and save that in here as well. So once saved, let me restart the application so that it picks up this new token that we have added. So now if I switch the environments, we can use based on the environments and invoke this. So let's switch over to test and let's test this. So it's also now going to send the bearer API token as part of its request. So if I look at the request, you can see here authorization and it specifies the bearer and the my secret key value from my secrets.json. So if I go into the secrets.json and change this value, so let's say my secrets value new and come back and test this again, it is going to send the new request. So you can see here, this is my secret key new. Now we have successfully added a sensitive information inside the .http file and remain to not add this as part of your source code. Now the other providers that it supports includes Azure Key Vault if you're using this as part of your team. So this allows you to centrally manage the keys inside one place. Now, if you want to learn more about that, I highly recommend checking out this documentation, which will be linked in the description below. Now the .http files doesn't have to be limited to the APIs that you are building. You can also have a .http file for APIs that you interact with. This allows you to quickly test the API endpoints and see the responses inside your IDE itself. This also makes sure to see if there has been changes in response types, etc. when you're integrating with third-party APIs. So you could have a .http file for each of those third-party integrations within your source code. I hope you find this useful and start using this inside your applications. See you in the next video.